Did you know that the number one engine repair issue in Jeep's 3.6 Pentastar V6 is the valve train? And of those valve train issues, most of them seem to be related to lack of oiling or maybe even no oiling due to dry startups. Yeah, that's right, dry startups. And that's because in their oil filter and oil cooler assembly, there is not an anti-drain back valve in here, keeping the oil primed to the upper part of the engine. Now you may recognize this part here. This is your oil filter cap, and you're gonna unscrew this to pull your filter out to change it. Well, then we have our oil filter bowl, and that goes back into our oil cooler. Now this whole assembly rides down in the valley of the V6, and it's underneath your intake manifold, so you don't really see a lot of it except for up here. And as mentioned before, there is no oil drain back valve in here that's keeping this whole assembly and the areas up above on the engine filled with oil. So about 35 minutes after you shut that engine off, the oil is gonna drain out of this oil filter bowl, it's gonna drain out of your oil cooler and the surrounding areas, and it's gonna drain back to the oil pan. And then each time you start it up, that oil pump has to lift the oil back up and fill throughout the top part of the engine, including this filter bowl and the oil cooler. And that takes about 3.5 seconds to get the oil to where it's needed to go. Now that may not seem like a lot, and it's probably not gonna cause a catastrophic failure today or tomorrow. But you can imagine, that dry startup day after day, month after month, well, it can affect the longevity of your engine. But don't worry, there is a fix. This is the Baxter Performance Spin-On Oil Filter Adapter, and it replaces your OE oil filter cartridge. It screws down in place, locks in place, and then a spin-on filter goes right on top. Now this is gonna make your oil filter changes a lot easier, but more importantly, there's a check valve in the center here, and that's gonna keep the top end of the engine all primed with oil. It's not gonna drain back down, so no more dry starts, and that's gonna help maximize your engine's longevity. The Baxter Performance Spin-On Oil Filter Adapter is precision machined from billet aluminum and is anodized for long life. It uses Viton O-rings, and it's all made right here in the USA. There are no wear items, so there's nothing to service. And best of all, these are easy to install. So let's show you how it's done. Now the first thing we wanna do is shut the engine off and leave it for at least 40 minutes just to let all the oil drain back down into the oil pan. Then we're gonna take a 24 mil socket, go right on top of our oil filter can. And let's go ahead and unscrew that. Now, if it's been sitting overnight, you might notice that the oil filter's quite dry when you pull it out. I'm expecting a little bit of oil here because it's only been sitting about 40 minutes. But that's actually pretty dry with just a little bit of oil drips. Most of it's stuck up in the top of that cap. We're gonna grab our Baxter Performance adapter and you wanna look, this is our locking cleat. This is what's gonna lock it into the oil filter bowl. And you wanna make sure that the threads on the locking cleat are perfectly lined up with the threads on the adapter. If it's off a little bit, it's not gonna screw in very easily. If we do need to adjust it, we're gonna use a 5 30 seconds Allen key, and then you can just spin it down or spin it up until it's perfectly in line. Now also notice that we've got two eighth inch ports. They're 180 degrees out, and you're gonna be screwing our 90 degree adapter into one of them, depending on where they sit. Now we're gonna take our adapter. We're not gonna put the O-rings in yet. We're gonna drop it down in, and let's just screw it down, and we wanna go until it hits the bottom. We wanna look at where our ports are. We have one back here and one here. We've got enough room over here to put our 90 degree adapter, but it's not gonna quite screw in, so we wanna back this out, and you don't wanna go any more than 180 degrees. So we're gonna screw this port. And now that port's over here where we have plenty of room to screw our 90 degree adapter in. Then we wanna look around and see what other things we might have in our way. Now, depending on your year of your 3.6, you may have things like, well, this boss right here. It's just a plastic boss that's not being used and it's gonna interfere with our spin-on filter. 
So this needs to go away. So we're gonna screw our oil filter cap back in place. Now, if you have an older 3.6, you might have some vacuum lines running right along here that you have to move off to the side to be able to get that oil filter in and out. And with that done, we can then remove our filter cap again and install the Baxter adapter. And now it's time to install the O-rings. So we're gonna first install our small O-ring and then in goes the big O-ring. Then we're gonna use an O-ring pick and slide it underneath the O-ring and spin it all the way around to make sure that O-ring isn't twisted. Now for that eighth inch pipe plug, you wanna add a little bit of oil to the threads and then we're gonna screw that into the port that you're not using. Screw that in nice and tight, make sure it's seated down in there. And we're also gonna take a little bit of that oil and that's gonna go around the O-rings. Now we'll take our Baxter adapter and that goes in. And we can use a one inch socket to help spin that in. Once we bottom out, we wanna back up until we have our port at the location that's exposed. And now we can use that 5 30 seconds Allen and we're gonna lock that cleat in place. And now that adapter is not going anywhere. Now we want to screw our 90 degree fitting into that port. And one way to make it easy to get it in there and tight is to use a 15 16 inch wrench and it'll fit right over the end of that. And we want to throw a little engine oil on those threads. Let's go ahead and spin this guy in. There we go. Now the Schrader valve already has sealant on it, so we don't need to add any oil or anything. And that takes an 11 mil socket. Want to get that nice and tight. For our filter, we're using the Wix 57045. You want to use this or something similar and make sure it's a good quality filter. So we lubricated the bottom of our filter gasket. And we want to come in and just come in snug and then give it another three quarters of a turn. So that's all there is to installing the Baxter Performance Spin-On Oil Filter Adapter. So all we have left to do is prime the engine with oil and start it up. All right, so here is the Jeep engine oil priming method. So we wanna put both our feet on the pedal. So one on the gas pedal, one on the brake. We're gonna push them both down. Then we're gonna hit the start button. Now, once we hit that start button, the engine's gonna start turning over and it's not gonna stop until we take our feet off the pedals and then hit that start button again. So we've got both pedals depressed. Four to five seconds. Now we'll release it and hit that button. And we're gonna do that twice. So again, we're gonna push both pedals down and then hit that start button. Take our feet off, hit it again, and it stops. We've done that twice. The engine's now primed, so now we can start it as normal. Now, if you have a clutch, you're gonna have your foot on the gas and foot on the clutch pedal. And if you have a key, instead of a push button, you're gonna be using that key on and off. Now we're gonna let it run and let that oil circulate throughout the entire engine. Then we're gonna shut it off, give it a minute or two, and check our oil level.
All right, so we've given it a chance for the oil to settle back to the pan. And we're gonna pull our dipstick. And then we're gonna check it again. Now what you might notice is that your oil level is a little bit lower than normal. And that's because we're retaining a lot of the oil back up in the top end of the engine. So we have about a quart and a half of oil that we're retaining up in the upper part of the engine, including the oil cooler, the oil filter bowl, and the oil filter. For some reason you find that you don't even have any oil on your dipstick to begin with, and you know you started with the right amount of oil to begin with, you'll wanna add just enough oil that you're showing the oil on your dipstick. And if you know that you have the correct amount of oil in your vehicle, so that's five quarts for the JLJT, six quarts for the JK, then you'll know this is your new oil level for when it's full. All right, now to change the engine oil, the first thing we need to do is remove our filler cap. Then we can remove our Schrader valve cap. And we wanna apply 30 PSI, a minimum of 30 PSI of air right to that Schrader valve. We're gonna hold it for about five seconds, maybe a little bit longer. That'll give time to blow all that oil from the filter and the filter uh, housing down into the oil pan. And we can apply it plenty of air. It's not gonna hurt anything because our oil pump does have a bypass valve on it. So if it's overpressurized, it'll just bypass. Now the neat thing about this process is by running air down in through that, it's gonna force the oil back out through the pickup tube. And so if you have any debris on the very bottom of that pickup tube screen in the oil pan, it'll actually clean that screen right out. Now we can grab our filter and we're gonna give it a quick spin. We shouldn't have much oil up here, but let's throw a rag down in there just in case. And look at that, a nice clean oil filter change. So that's the Baxter Performance spin-on oil filter adapter for the 3.6 Pentastar in your Jeep. If you'd like more information or like to get one on its way to you, we'll click that link down in the description box below. And if you have any questions, we'll leave those down in the comments section. We'd be happy to answer them for you. Thanks for watching today. We'll see you again soon.